Hi, welcome to Case of the Day and today is Wednesday, so it's one case every day from Monday to Thursday and I've expanded the indication, so it's discussing a case I've reported or biopsied the same day, whose biopsy report I've received the same day or an article I have read the same day and today we're combining a case that I've seen today with an article that I've read today which is kind of fresh, hot of the, hot of the press. So today is the 54th case titled Typical Fibrotic HP is a Pattern, Not a Diagnosis. So you have a 53-year-old patient, cough for 5 to 6 years, previous CT showing a non-IPF ILD pattern 3 years ago in 2022 with a history of exposure to parrots for 8 years. I'm giving you all the history. Here we see a patient who's got reticular opacities, there's traction bronchiectasis, there is no obvious honeycombing. So the first step is it is a fibrosing ILD. Then we can see that there's an axial distribution and if you see, I'll put a link at the end, the second case of the day was on axial versus peripheral distribution. So there's an axial distribution, no significant zonal predominance. Um, and we've got subtle areas of ground glass. So if you look at the four bucket uh, cate categorization of fibrosing ILD, this fits into non-IPF or alternate diagnosis. So this is a non-IPF fibrosing ILD. Now if you look at the 2020 criteria that came out for uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, then the way to make a diagnosis of a typical fibrotic HP is if you see fibrosis, in any of these distributions and one uh, finding of small airways disease. So here we can see the triple density sign, lucent lung, ground glass, normal lung. Um, we can also see widespread areas of air trapping. I haven't put the expiratory image, but a lot of these are just areas of air trapping suggesting a small airways component. And so you basically have classic findings of a typical fibrotic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So that's what this is. But the question is, and this is how we normally report it. We'll say that this is highly suggestive of typical fibrotic HP and leave it at that. But the question is, is this also, so this is fibrotic HP on CT. Is this actually clinically fibrotic HP as a disease or a diagnosis or could it be something else like connective tissue disease and so I read this paper today it was published online just about six uh, days ago it's from the Canadian group and they looked at 164 patients I'll break this down again better with a CT pattern of typical fibrotic HP and the, the findings were interesting. Now, this builds on an earlier paper by pretty much the same group where they looked at lung imaging patterns in connective tissue disease ILD. And here you see that fibrotic HP is a pattern in the different CTD ILD. So that's the light green here, SLE having the largest component, RA having a significant number, etc. So it, this group has already established and we've known this clinically over the last 30 years that many patients where we say that the pattern is classic fibrotic HP turn out to have other diagnoses including connective tissue disease. But this paper puts it um, much better, shows it much better. So here is a better way of looking at the data. I did put all this through Claude which is an AI LLM uh, to understand this better. So out of the 164 patients with CT diagnosis of typical fibrotic HP, 30 patients had fibrotic HP with exposure identified, 34 patients had fibrotic HP without exposure, but 22, that is 36 patients, 22% had CTD ILD and 14%, that is 23 patients had other diagnosis, which means that when we say it on CT, that it's a typical fibrotic HP, only 64%, about two thirds have fibrotic HP as their clinical diagnosis, one third have others. To break this down better, these were the exposures identified. This is the patient without exposures and they had worse outcome than HP with exposure. 
these are the different uh, connective tissue diseases that were found and these were the different entities in the other diagnosis so you had sarcoid vasculitis ipf presenting as a fibrotic hp pattern drug associated so you have other etiologies as well so these together make up 36 percent of patients who have an alternate diagnosis when we see a typical fibrotic HP pattern on CT, more importantly, on follow-up, the HP without exposure group of 56 patients had 9 patients who developed new findings. 4 had CTD, 4 had positive autoimmune tests, 1 went into the exposure group. And even those with exposure to birds, pigeons, etc., 4 of them had new findings, two of them developed CTD. So imagine two out of 49 patients where you really thought this was fibrotic HP landed up having CTD. So this is, this is interesting. What does this mean for us as radiologists? In the light of this paper, and this is not something that's come out of the blue, it is something that we've known for some time, but now we have data that supports this and hopefully we'll have other papers that corroborate this as well. But we've already started doing this over the last year, ever since that CTD ILD uh, paper came with the HP pattern. So this is what I, how I would report this patient. It would be a fibrosing ILD is seen with a non-IPF pattern with many features highly suggestive of a typical fibrotic HP pattern. Now this sentence you may or may not put in. Uh, please investigate for a definite etiology including CTD, especially if there is no history of exposure to account for these findings. This sentence is, is you may or may not put. Uh, we do because many of our referring doctors appreciate that, that we write this down. So in short, typical fibrotic HP on CT is a radiologic pattern, not a clinical diagnosis. And that's what we need to put down in our report that's the leadership summit now in three days my whatsapp channel thank you so much for viewing this